So now that we've done a lot of crazy stuff to this object, uh, it's looking pretty cool. But let's, you know what? Let's start from kind of when we were a little bit simpler. One thing you can do, again, you can hit Control Z and Control Z and Control Z to kind of go back through your undos, or you can go up here to your undo uh, area up here, undo history, and click and drag, and you can actually drag backwards and forwards on all these undos you've done. So I'm going to go back to where we were dynameshed, but we we're still kind of simple. So let's, let's stay here. So now if we start sculpting again, it's probably going to yell at us, hey, you've undone almost 70 undos. Are you sure you want to start again from this point? I can hit OK. And let's talk about the clay brush. So I've kind of snuck in some brushes in here. So we've talked about the inflate brushes. It's fairly simple. You're inflating along the surface normal like you're blowing into a tube. Snake hook, which is kind of like the uh, awesome version of the move brush. Or not awesome, but I mean, it's a little bit different. Uh, but now we're going to also talk about the snake or the uh, clay brush. So these are the three brushes I use all the time, especially for dynamics or um, organic sculpting with Dynamesh. So I'm going to start with, usually when I'm sculpting, I'm going to start with probably the standard brush to kind of block in like, well, what is this thing? It's kind of a face, kind of a skull thing, and I'm kind of moving these things around. It's like an ornamental little skull thing. And I'm holding down Shift to kind of smooth when I want to. I'm holding down Alt to kind of dig in. And then I'm kind of just sculpting without holding down Alt to kind of sculpt out. And of course, Shift to smooth. And then as well as the move brush. So we've talked about the move brush and we've actually talked about snake hook. So if you want to go to the side here and change these profiles or kind of maybe pull this mouth shape out or something and or maybe up, down, maybe make these big intake valves or something here. You kind of move those around. If you want them to kind of sweep back, you can kind of go, this, again, holding, navigating, holding down shift. You can snap to the side view here and you can kind of move these things back around. You can smooth these inside parts out. So now he's got these big like pelican looking mouth bag shape things. Let's say we like those. So that's move standard or standard brush, move brush. Uh, let's talk about the clay brush. So a clay brush is kind of a nice organic build up too. If you're doing like um, more like form work, especially organic like muscle stuff. Uh, there's a couple different variations of the clay brush we're going to talk about. We'll start with a regular clay brush. And for you, that's going to be under B, C, uh, and then L the clay brush. I'm going to go to click that. It's also going to throw it back here in the most recently used. So if I go ahead and hit R to kind of get rid of all those extra ones and I go B, oops, BMV for move brush. Standard brush is probably, oh, no, it's not in there. So we're going to go B, S, T and then brush clay, B, C, L. So now we've got move brush, standard brush and clay brush in there ready to go. And of course, since I use these all the time, I've got them to sign hotkeys. So I've actually can go Alt W, Alt S, Alt C to kind of cycle between those. But we haven't talked about hotkeys yet, but we'll get there. And we got our smooth brush. And that's just uh, the modifier brush for holding down Shift. So now we can start sculpting this in. Now let's talk about the clay brush. So the standard brush is kind of going to give you a line in here. And speaking of that line that it gives you, you're going to kind of notice when you start ZBrush by default, and I assume I haven't changed it. So I'm going to go over here to my stroke, open up the lazy mouse, and um, by default, lazy mouse is on, and the radius is set at 1 for the standard brush. So I don't know why it changed on me. I must have been doing something weird. But if I hold down Alt, you're going to see that little, that little tiny, what is that, little rubber band, that little red line that kind of sticks out from behind it. That's just a way to kind of smooth your stroke out. Now, that comes in handy a lot when you're using... Uh, some of the brushes, but for other the brushes, um, it's kind of you can kind of get in the way, depending on if you want a nice smooth stroke or you don't. So for the standard brush, by default, if you go up here, to, let's go ahead and dock it. So I'm going to get rid of this brush menu over here, and you can actually just shut it down. You don't have to remove it completely. And we'll take the stroke, and we'll just throw this over here. And in the stroke menu, you've got a lazy mouse sub menu, and if I hit L, that toggles lazy mouse on and on, on and off. And this is specific to the standard brush, so. When I'm messing with the lazy mouse, that's only messing with the lazy mouse for the standard brush. It's not global, it's for the specific brush. So by default, the lazy radius is set at 1. So when you launch up ZBrush and you start using the standard brush and you're sculpting, you may not even notice it, but the lazy mouse is kind of spitting out behind you and kind of smoothing your stroke out, which is okay, especially for like long ornamental stuff. Um, but if you want to, let's say you want to like put dots on the top of this object. Well, you're not going to really be able to do that. Now you can kind of do this and kind of move that rubber band around to kind of make dots. But if you want to just put dots in there, go ahead and hit L to turn lazy mouse off and then just tap 
And now you can kind of see, you can just really quickly, and hold on Alt, if you want to put in, you know, these kind of dots here, just kind of dig them in there to your object. So that's the difference. So, but also, because we've turned Lazy Mouse off, you know, my strokes aren't going to be as smooth, unless you have a really natural smooth stroke, which I don't. If I need a really long smooth S-curve, I'm gonna, it's going to end up looking like this if I do it. Uh, so I'll go ahead and turn Lazy Mouse on in order to get really long smooth S-curves. So use those as you see fit. Usually when I'm blocking out an organic object, I'll turn it off just because I want, you know, kind of I want to be able to make fast transitions and kind of dig these things out kind of push these in, then I'm kind of going in here and kind of sculpting things up and sculpting them down. I'm actually going to change my Z intensity. I'm going to crank it up a little bit so I can kind of be a little bit more rough with my mesh here. Kind of very quickly kind of block out. And again, I'm just making shapes. I'm not making a creature or anything right now. Um, but just kind of playing with the object here. And of course, control Dynamesh, control swipe out here. And we haven't talked about masking yet, but if you accidentally control swipe and it's like, oh, I mask this object accidentally. No big deal. Just control swipe out here in your document to get rid of that. And then control swipe again. That'll redynamize your mesh. So going in here and sculpting. Now, so we talked about lazy mouse. So if I take that, take, turn L back on, that's going to toggle my lazy mouse back on for my standard brush. And if I crank that lazy radius way up, let's go up to 100. And then I drag that out. That's going to leave a huge string behind my object, which is good if you want to make really long sweeping strokes like that. Now again, you can hold down Alt, and you can make really long, perfectly smooth deformations in your object like this, and I think uh, Photoshop actually has a plugin for that now, where you can kind of have that attached to your pen, and it is super useful for some stuff. So you can kind of change this lazy radius to kind of get a good feel for how much of that rubber band you want. Or if you hit L, you can just turn it off completely. So I'm going to go ahead and turn that off. I'm going to go back here to our weirdo other face. And I'm going to kind of pull this face out. There we go. So now I'm going to control drag to redynamesh, make sure we're all set up. And then with standard brush off, I can go back here, or lazy mouse off and standard brush on, I can go back here and start sculpting this stuff out. Now let's talk about the clay brush. So what I like to do with the clay brush is I'll go ahead and sculpt in some areas here, but now let's say I want to puff these cheeks out. If I use my standard brush, let's turn the Z intensity down, you can kind of do it, but it wants to kind of puff up in a line, because standard mouse is all about that line, as you can see here. Uh, but clay brush, if I go into, uh, you know, we've touched it over here, so let's go ahead and open back our brush menu up here. Um, we've brought it up again, so again, it's just hit the clay brush in here, or if you lost it, you can hit B, C, L or just go find it in here. Now clay brush is going to build up a little bit differently. So you're going to touch and you're going to drag and if you just kind of tap you're going to see it kind of builds up in kind of a, a clay build up type of way and we'll get to clay build up in a second but the clay brush is very different way to kind of build up your mesh. So I can kind of puff this out and again I'm not like clicking and dragging and doing this I'm just kind of like tapping lightly. I don't know if you can hear it over the sound of my air conditioning in here. But you can just kind of very subtly build up a lot of really cool organic forms just using your clay brush. And again, I'm just tap, 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 tapping as I move around my mesh, kind of building these forms up. So already you can see I've got kind of a little grinchy thing going on. And of course I can still smooth this down. So I'll usually hop back and forth between my clay and my standard brush. And of course, control drag out here if you want to read Dyna mesh. Um, so what I'll end up doing is kind of using my standard brush to dig in and kind of dig in here. And let's go ahead and dig in up here and then maybe over here and then hey maybe even down here and I'll smooth these transitions out and just I'm just really digging in. I'm going to change my Z intensity up a little bit. So I'm really going to dig in these areas and then I can control drag to Dynamesh, smooth them out a little bit if I need to and then go hop into my clay brush, just select it and then you can kind of just pull out and you can kind of just start really kind of getting some really neat and now if you hold down Alt that's the same thing as a standard brush. It'll actually dig in, and then you can let go of Alt to kind of dig out. So you can kind of very quickly dig in and dig out. Now, if I could use my standard brush down here on the lower lip to kind of build a ridge, and then I could use my clay brush to kind of build up to that ridge. So you get a feel for how you're going to utilize these things as you kind of go on. And then, of course, you want to go back out here to your move brush and kind of start doing any weird moving you want to do. A little extraterrestrial looking face. So use standard brush and clay brush and move brush, all of these to your advantage and the different properties of them. So just to kind of illustrate a little bit better up here on this forehead, I'm going to dig in with the standard brush. Now if I 
build up next to this line here with the standard brush, I can certainly do that. Now, if I want to build up next to this line, it's going to want to like suck together. See how I, as I drag this along, it's going to want to be like, well, I'm going to borrow some of this geo from that one. Claybrush doesn't really behave like that. So if I go up here to Claybrush, then I'm going to crank up the Z intensity for the Claybrush up there. <clears throat> so if I build up next to here, you're going to see it kind of builds up in a flatter area. So it's kind of a flat build up as opposed to a standard brush kind of tubular layout. But n right next to these, I can build up another clay brush. Whereas if I grab the standard brush and try and build up next to this one, it's going to want to like borrow that. It's going to kind of get rid of that line. So those are the two kind of major differences between clay brush. It kind of respects uh, forms between really close forms and then standard brush kind of just builds up in a tubular way and doesn't really respect its neighbors all that much. But you know they're both very useful. Like I said, I'll end up digging in with my standard brush a lot and then I'll use clay brush to kind of build up around those areas here and then even just in general for muscles or anything like that you can certainly use your clay brush to kind of build up those forms. 